So, you finally collected 100 golden walnuts, and you're ready to enter the Forbidden Walnut Room. Congrats! Now it's time to move on to your next challenge. Today I'll walk you through all 10 of Mr. Key's special orders. If you haven't played the 1.5 update for Stardew yet, or haven't made it to this point, I'll leave it up to you whether you should watch this video or come back later. So think of Mr. Key's quests as more advanced versions of the special orders board outside Mayor Lewis's. I'll go through each one in order of total rewards from lowest to highest. If you're watching this video within a few hours of its release, I'm currently streaming live on Twitch for the first time. Come say hi or lurk around if you want. Back to today's topic, let's first go over some general info and tips. The rewards for these repeatable quests are key gems, and this currency allows you to buy some of the most powerful items in the game. Start by checking Mr. Key's board every Monday because that's when the board resets with two new quests. You can only choose one quest at a time, but you're allowed to have more than one active at a time. So if you've previously grabbed one with a longer time frame, you can potentially stack them. Something to consider if you have a quest requiring prismatic shards and another quest sending you to the Skull Cavern. You may get lucky and be able to knock them out in one fell swoop. Additionally, the timer starts on each quest on Monday, whether you accept it then or later on. But once you know the possible quest, you can prepare before the quest comes up, whether it's planting specific crops beforehand, or making preparations for fishing, gift giving, or mining beforehand. Making staircases with stone, or trading for them with jade at the Desert Trader is a good way of prepping before you even start these quests. Okay, up first, with a reward of only 10 key gems, if you complete it within 7 days, is the quest called Let's Play a Game. You'll need to score 50,000 or more points in Junimo Kart Endless Mode. I have a guide on the Progress Mode version of this game that I'll link below, and the principles are pretty much the same. But unlike Progress Mode, you only have one life. Cruise through several abbreviated versions of the Progress Mode levels without dying, and voila. I know some people really struggle with this game, and there's no shame in that. Even with a lot of practice, this can be a pain. With the lowest rewards of all the quests, you can opt to skip this one entirely if it appears on the board. I like Junimo Kart, and you can get 50k points before the dreaded Mushroom level appears, so I don't mind knocking this out every few weeks. Up next, you'll receive 20 key gems if you complete the quest Extended Family within 3 days. You'll need to catch Miss Angler, Glacierfish Jr., Son of Crimson Fish, Radioactive Carp, and The Legend 2. They can be caught in the same locations as the older generation of Legendary Fish, but the fishing bar is not distinctly marked as it is with the original Legends. Prepare yourself with your best fishing gear. Fishing attire is optional. I opted to use an Iridium Rod with the Master Enchantment, granting me an extra fishing level. That plus Seafoam Pudding means I'll be doing this with a level 15 fishing skill. I also recommend Wild Bait if you have it, and then whatever your preferred tackle is. Head down to the sewers for the Radioactive Carp. Miss Angler can be caught fishing north of the wooden bridge in Pelican Town that's above Jojamart. Son of Crimson Fish can be found by fishing on the East Pier at the beach. The Legend 2 can be caught by fishing near the log that's underwater at the mountain lake. Finally, Glacier Fish Jr. can be caught at the southern tip of the island in the forest. The third one on my list is Key's Hungry Challenge, and you'll get 25 key gems for completing this within 7 days. You'll need to reach level 100 of the Skull Cavern without consuming any food items. My best tip here is that Key didn't say anything about consuming items before you enter. Wait for a good luck day for a better chance at ladders and shafts appearing, and pop a triple shot espresso and magic rock candy or whatever buff you prefer before starting your dive. This will give you a nice head start. If you've prepared staircases and want to go the easy route, feel free to use them all the way down. Otherwise, look out for large purple slimes with hearts inside them for additional health. Take your time, avoid damage, and utilize bombs or explosive ammo to descend quickly. Focus on finding ladders and consider skipping shafts to avoid losing more health on big level drops. Also remember that a shaft drop will never drop your health to zero. Personally, I'm using two Iridium bands that are combined with the Burglar's Ring for more loot and the Savage Ring for speed boosts after killing monsters. Consider upgrading your preferred weapon too at the forge for additional damage. The fourth quest is Key's Cuisine, and you'll receive 25 gems if you can ship 100,000 gold worth of freshly cooked items within 14 days. These dishes will have fresh in their name, so you can't ship anything cooked prior to accepting the quest. You can utilize items and recipes you already have on hand, like fish or sashimi, eggs for fried eggs, and hazelnuts for roasted hazelnuts. 
If you have the recipe for tropical curry from the island resort and prep pineapples, hot peppers, and coconuts beforehand, this is a good option as it's easy and sells for 500 each. There's honestly a million ways to knock this out depending on what you have on hand. If gold doesn't matter to you, buy the triple shot espresso recipe from Gus as well as 669 coffees. Nice. Each espresso will cost 900 to make and only sell for 450, but it's a quick way of knocking this out. I'm interested in hearing about how you guys completed this one too, because there's a lot of options. The fifth quest is Key's Prismatic Grange, and you'll receive 35 key gems if you can place 100 red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple items into Key's collection box within two weeks. If gold is no issue, you can mostly buy your way through this one. 100 cherry bombs from the dwarf will set you back 30,000 and knock out red quickly. Otherwise, a crop like cranberries is an option. Similarly, orange can be covered with copper ore bought from Clint. If you have the mutant bug layer unlocked, it's a great place to farm fiber for green and bug meat for purple. You could also collect void essences or iridium ore for purple. For blue, we can purchase joja colas from the vending machine in the saloon. If you have enough spare trees to cut down, sap is a quick way to knock out yellow. If you already have sap and wood, you could also craft torches. If you happen to have some of the new fruits too, mangoes, bananas, and pineapples are all considered yellow. Feel free to mix and match, there's a lot of viable options for this one. The sixth quest is four precious stones, and you'll receive 40 key gems if you find four prismatic shards and place them in Key's collection box within 28 days. I really like this one because I do a ton of Skull Cavern dives. I have hundreds of prizzies on hand, and unlike other quests, you don't have to earn them while the quest is active. So if you have four shards on hand, you're already done. Otherwise, Iridium Ore Farming is my recommendation for finding shards. If that's not your thing, there's several other options, and the month-long time frame should be enough for you to knock this out. The seventh quest is Key's Kindness, and you'll receive 40 key gems if you can give 50 loved gifts in one week. Universally loved gifts make this a quick one. Prismatic shards can be given to everyone but Haley, and rabbit's feet can be given to everyone except Penny. Otherwise, you might need to hop through all of the NPC's preferences and give what you have on hand. Saving birthday gifts from Statues of Perfection is not a reasonable strategy, but it was something available to me after spending so many years on this file, so I figured I'd mention it. The eighth quest is Skull Cavern Invasion, and you'll receive 40 key gems if you can make it to level 100 of the Skull Cavern in 7 days. The catch here is that the monsters are now on X Games mode. They're harder to kill and deal more damage. The same strategies for Key's Hungry Challenge apply to this one, except you can bring as many heals as you need. I also use a Galaxy Hammer to abuse the combo chaining that's possible on the PC version of the game. Basically, hold left click down. While holding left click, right click for the special attack and then immediately spam C on your keyboard. This will extend the special attack and allows you to OCO most enemies. It takes a bit of practice, but it's the reason I prefer hammers over other weapons. If you're comfortable with combat, take the time to slay monsters and farm radioactive ore. The beefier monsters have some very good item drops like key gems and galaxy souls. The ninth quest is Danger in the Deep, and you'll receive 50 key gems if you can reach the bottom of the mines, again, in 7 days. The catch here is that, similar to the last quest, you'll now encounter new monsters. Just like your first mines journey to 120, the elevator will save your progress every 5 levels, so this can be done in chunks. Also, be on the lookout for special slimes that have the star antenna on their heads. I noticed one drop pressure nozzles for me, which is a pretty great find. I didn't have trouble with this quest, but be aware of the putrid ghosts. They will cause a nauseated debuff if they hit you, and you'll be unable to heal or consume items for a period of time. The tenth and final quest is Key's Crop, and you'll receive 100 key gems if you can ship 500 key fruit in 28 days. So he's hidden beans throughout the world. Find them, grow them, propagate them, and ship 500 key fruit within the time frame. This is a bit of a pain, but the reward is good, and there are many ways of finding key beans. I opted to spend a day bombing in the Skull Cavern because that fits my playstyle. Alternatively, chopping trees, fishing, opening geodes, and the mutant bug lair are just some of the other ways of finding beans. Once I had a good amount, I started planting on the island farm. The fruits will normally take four days to grow, but Deluxe Speed Grow reduces this to three days, and the agriculturalist profession reduces this even further to two days. I set up some seed makers and went through several rounds of planting, sleeping, harvesting, and placing fruits in the makers. I wasn't in danger of running out of time, but this quest does take a while. 
Okay, so that wraps up all 10 of key special orders. Head over to the Walnut Room again and peruse all of the rewards you can purchase with your new stash of key gems. Let me know which ones you plan on picking up. If you have any questions on these quests or have some of your own tips, feel free to leave a comment below. Finally, I wanted to mention something that's been on my mind. Recently, in Habu's stream, Concerned Ape stopped by and clarified that Mr. Key's name is actually pronounced Mr. Kui. I tried saying it correctly, but it didn't feel right for this video. I'm not sure if I'll ever adjust to that. Well, anyway, thanks for hanging around if you've made it this far. Like the video, consider subscribing, and come say hi on Twitch if you want. See ya.